Fractions are an important topic because there are a lot of questions that involve fractions and use fractions and they're not something that you necessarily have a lot of practice with, especially with a calculator you're using decimals most of the time. Um, so we'll start off with just a little bit of terminology. Uh, the number on the top of the bar is called the numerator and the number on the bottom is called the denominator and really there's a link between everyday language and these terms. The numerator is just the number of whatever denomination you have. And so for this example, for instance, three quarters, you can think of this as really three coins, right? A coin called a quarter is 25 cents. It's a quarter of a dollar. If you have three of them, you have three quarters of a dollar, 75 cents. And so there's this link between the terms and everyday language. And I think this really helps uh, make fractions a little bit easier. Um, you know, similarly, the denominator can't be zero. You can divide up a dollar into four units, five units, ten units. If you divide it up into ten units, you have ten cents apiece. You call them a dime. You can't divide it up into zero units, though. That doesn't make any sense. Now, equivalent fractions are just fractions that are equivalent to the same amount, but they look different. So, as an example, we have one quarter. And you can write that in an infinite number of ways. Two eighths is an example, three twelfths, four sixteenths. Uh, we could write it as ten fortieths. Could write it as uh, twenty five over a hundred. There's literally an infinite number of ways. So, how do you generate new fractions or equivalent fractions? What you're really doing, and we haven't introduced multiplication yet or gone over multiplication yet, but hopefully it's not too rusty for you, is we're taking a fraction like 3 fifths, for instance, and we're multiplying it by a version of 1. So let's say we multiply it by 2 over 2. Now we know anything divided by itself is equal to 1, so I'm not changing it here. It's the same value. And what do we end up with? The numerator is simply 3 times 2, which is 6. The denominator is 5 times 2, which is 10. So in that way, we've created a fraction that looks different. The numerator is different. The denominator is different. But it has exactly the same value. And creating equivalent fractions is really important when we get to adding and subtracting fractions, which in general is a little trickier than multiplying and dividing fractions. Now there's another issue that comes up and that is mixed fractions and common fractions. Common fractions are fractions where you simply have a numerator and a denominator. A mixed fraction you have a whole number followed by a fraction. So one and two thirds, four and two sevenths. These are mixed fractions. And what they are missing but really mean is one plus two thirds. They're missing that plus sign. Now how do you convert a mixed fraction to a common fraction? Well, one, uh, and again, we'll go over this a little bit more detail when we get into adding, you can create an equivalent fraction for one, which is simply three over three, and you can create, uh, then add it to two thirds. And you need to have a common denominator when you're adding fractions. It's a bit like adding coins. Right? If you, you can add up a certain number of quarters or a certain number of dimes, but you wouldn't just say, I have seven dimes and quarters. That doesn't make any sense. So here we end up with five over three. Now you may find little shortcuts for coming up with this. One way is to take the one, multiply it by the three, and add it to the two on the top. So in that way, one times 3 plus 2 gives you 5. And that's how you get the, nu the numerator. The denominator stays the same, 3. Okay, so let's try that again both ways. If we wanted to create an equivalent fraction for 4, that whole number part, it would be 28 over 7. And then we could add that to 2 over 7 to get 30 over 7, the common fraction equivalent of 4 and 2 sevenths. So again, where did that 30 come from? 
Well, I took the whole number part, 4, and I multiplied it by the denominator 7, and then I added that numerator 2 to get 30. So I was multiplying this whole number by the denominator 7 and then adding it to 2. Going in the opposite direction from a common fraction to a mixed fraction, we have to do a division, but instead of thinking of a decimal division where you're going to get a whole number followed by a decimal, you only want to focus on the whole number. So 13 divided by 4, you can ask yourself how many times does 4 go into 13, or you can do an approximate division. Uh, 13 divided by 4 is 3, because 3 times 4 is 12, so you're looking for uh, a number that is less than the actual quotient um, so that you get the whole number part. So we know that the whole number part starts with 3. So how many times does um, 4 go into 13? goes in 3 times. When you take the 3 and you multiply it by 4 you get 12. So you still have one part left over. So 3 and 1 quarter. Let's try that again for 17 over 5. Ask yourself how many times 5 goes into 17. Goes in roughly 3 times, a little bit more than 3, because 3 times 5 is 15. So again, we have a whole number part of 3. And 3 times 5 is 15. What's left? There's still two more parts in the numerator. So we have 2 fifths. We'll get a little bit more practice with this uh, in the addition and subtraction part.